Yeah, we're excited. It's been a long, feels like a long time um, coming. And personally, as a coach, uh, I'm always feeling like, ah, oh, we're just not prepared completely. Are we ready? Are we not? Did we do everything? And that's just the coach and me. These guys are ready to play. They're anxious to get on the field. They're anxious to face a different pitching staff. They're anxious to pitch to different hitters. I mean, um, we've covered about everything I can think of. So they're excited. We're excited to get started. We get started with uh, Eric Bailey. Daddy, it's good to see you again. Um, I just wanted to ask you, and I talked to some of your younger players about this, as they get ready for – the freshman to sophomore jump, they had great individual success, great team success last year. How do you prepare them for the new year and a clean slate and new goals? It's really complicated, really, um, because there's so many things to keep control of what's going on in their mind. But the most important thing that I know through experience is that you do not look in the review mirror. You look out the front windshield and you see what's ahead of you. Don't try to match what you did last year. Don't try to mimic anything or think that you're going to have the same feelings. It's a completely different journey. And the biggest roadblock you can have is if you try to outdo yourself and your performances the year before. And that is where we've gotten into a lot of trouble in the past. We've talked about it a lot. And um, I mean, these are these are things that are going to pop up on us as we go along. So we need to be ready and not be surprised by some of these things that might show up and be ready to handle them. So nothing's going to surprise us. We're going to be ready for anything, whether it's family, whether it's personal issue that a player has because they're trying too hard. We're going to be uh, very in tune and and have our hands all over that. So. Um, those are things with the younger players and all specifically three of our um, now sophomores have had phenomenal year, a lot of experience being part of that. And it's interesting because they, I think it's just natural behavior to want to outdo yourself or um, live up to what people believe your expectations like what their expectations are for you and we got to understand this isn't about trying to please anyone it's about playing as a team and doing it together and having each other's back those those are the important parts of this hey thanks so much for your time today good luck sure. okay. thank you yep we'll go to ryan neighbor yeah patty when we talk to you good to talk to you again um, when we talked to uh, Nicole earlier, she mentioned the, uh, the book you, you had them read, uh, I guess, What Drives Winning. Is that right? Correct. Uh, yeah. have, have you done that much? Had, a, had players you know, read a book over the offseason? And what, why that book specifically? And uh, what, what lessons did you want them to take from that? Yeah, I've done it quite a bit in the past, to be honest. Um, it's just getting them to understand that softball and this journey we're about to take is not the end all it's not the most important thing in the world it's something that we have the honor and privilege to do uh, the author of the book is a very good friend of mine and he's done a lot of work here with the Oklahoma uh, athletic department and a lot of us coaches and he's been very, very helpful to me. And quite honestly, from a coaching standpoint, his book changed my world. It really changed my world. It allowed me to understand how to meet athletes halfway. Instead of being the iron fist, it was more of like, let me meet them halfway. That was part of it. But it's um, really an easy read for an athlete. And I really recommend it for a lot of young athletes who are starting to get into the thick of recruitment. And uh, because there's so much anxiety and um, just depression, because you're not reaching these goals that everyone thinks you should be reaching, whether it's your parents, your coaches, your friends, 
or just the people out there that are trolling all over. <laughs> so um, I think they got a lot out of it. I think it re really resonated to them as players as much as it resonated to me as a coach. And just making sure I got the right book. Is that Brett Ledbetter? Brett Ledbetter. Actually, we're doing a Zoom with him in about 10 minutes. So he's he's on with us every couple of weeks. And it's been a really easy conversation with him. Very open. And he's he's really, really good. Really good. How, how'd you get acquainted with him? Um, well, like I said, um, the University of Oklahoma had heard about him, reached out to him. So he started coming in and like working with coaches. And I just had a lot of questions for him. So his, his phone, he answers his phone and text messages for me at all times. He puts on his own clinics for coaches. And uh, Bob Stoops has been interviewed, myself, uh, KJ, I believe. Um, some OSU coaches, um, a lot of, he's a basketball, he's, he's got a history of basketball. So you have Mike Krzyzewski, you have some uh, elite pro coaches. So he's, he's uh, versed in all sides of sports. Um, he, uh, he, he asks some tough questions and that's what I like. I, I like to be challenged and he always does that for me. Great stuff, Patty. I appreciate it. Good luck this weekend. Yeah, thank you. I will go to Ryan Chapman. Hey, Coach. Uh, thanks again for sticking with us last Thursday. Sorry again for all of that. But uh, we, we've asked a lot um, in the lead up of the preseason of how you are approaching um, building off last season. We've asked a lot about the players. I was curious for Coach JT and Coach Rocha specifically what their challenges have been and how they've tackled that because – seems like they have two different challenges with um, JT bring back a lot of the same lineup and coach Rocha bringing in two new pitchers to the rotation. Yeah, you're exactly right. They're dealing with completely opposite problems. Not, they're not problems. And coach Rocha has a new exuberance with the pitching staff uh, working with Jordy ball uh, is something you could really enjoy as a pitching coach and watching uh, a a young incoming freshman and what she's about to embark on this season and hope I've seen hopes, improvement, leaps and bounds. So she's really having fun kind of working with new pitchers and, and reaching their potential. And Nicole May's experience has been off the charts. And I think that's really going to continue to catapult her experience is what we have more than anyone else. And you can't buy it, you can't teach it, you can't learn it, you have to live it. And that's what we've been able to do. One thing that JT would be really proud of, the other day we had pitchers throwing live kind of around the snowbound field. And they, we had a group of six live hitters going against you know pitchers, one pitcher at a time. And the group of six would gather together and talk. I could hear them talking. All right, let's get together. Let's get our game plan together here. And they're coaching each other and they're learning and they're talking coach talk. And that is the greatest compliment JT could ever get is knowing that they're listening and they're learning and they're sharing He's done a really great job with um, we, we have some new freshmen that we're really trying to get caught up. And it's almost unfair to them because our freshmen are at such a our, our sophomores now are at such a high level that we're expecting these freshmen get up there, get up there. And they get pushed and pushed and pushed. And they're they're not quite ready, but they'll get there. And that's where has been, um, as well as making sure that some of these players are not chasing, they, they're getting really frustrated when they face our pitchers. And why can't I hit like I was, you know, that kind of talk. And we're like, you need, you need to knock that off right now. <laughs> and it, that is thinking backwards. And that's what we don't want them to do. So Approaches are all over this field. We have different approaches for different players. Um, and I 
I think we're we're hitting the mark right now. Thank you, Coach. Sure. We'll go to Jenny. Hey, Patty. Um, Kenny had his media day up at OSU yesterday, and he was mentioning how they've used the Women's College World Series in different ways, um, sometimes just pulling the bus into the parking lot early in the year, you know, and sort of just sh saying, here's where we want to be. Over your time, I'm curious how the Women's College World Series being so close, do you use it differently as motivation? Has it changed over the years as the program has gone from wanting to get there to now, you know, wanting to get there all the time? Like, do you use that carrot in, in, in any different ways now uh, than you did at the start? At the start, it was just like, um, it's every player's dream. And it was more of a hope than a reality, I guess. When 2000 hit, it was almost, we shocked the world and we shocked ourselves again, mm -hmm. to be honest. So we're a team that's there not knowing what we don't know. And that was the beauty of it is we're not playing nervous because we're not even supposed to be here. We don't know to be nervous. Why are we being nervous? That was the beauty of sometimes your first opportunity. And the first opportunity we got there we want it. It was like, how did we just, it was almost like, how did we just, how, do, how did we do that? And it, sometimes I think it's been, you can make it too hard. That 2000 team made it almost easy because they had no care in the world. And that to me is the key is the more you like, we have to, we must, it's our, you know, this is what our, we don't operate like that. It is an expectation we have, but we don't talk about it a lot because it's built into our championship mindset. If you want to be a champion, that's where you need to end up. So everything that we do practice wise is just geared to go in that direction without a lot of talk. Do you see um, sort of in the, you know, high tides lift all boats sort of mentality that, you know, it, that, that event elevated your status, it, you elevated its status, then the high school players, the talent in the state, the other programs, OSU now being a top five, maybe a, a team that, you know, could be there at the end with you guys. I mean, do you sort of see it being a, um, uh, you know, that it has all sort of worked in concert to create sort of what we're seeing that overall excellence now? Yeah, I think, I mean, I just know that you could be watching it from home and go, man, that is my goal is to be there next year. Right? And I, I see the rise, but there's so much work and you got to put in the right kind of work. And I think that's what I think of, of schools that have been to the World Series. It's like once you get that taste, then it's like, OK, I, there's no, there's nothing that's going to stop. Like we got to feel that again. We got to taste, we got to experience that high again. I think that is really the driving force. I think we are all so competitive. And once you take a drink of the Kool-Aid, it's like you want the gallon. And so not just you, but your players. And there's a little trick to understanding how to get there and what you need at the right time. And fortunately, we've been playing our best softball. Usually, we're notorious for playing our best late in the season. I don't know how that works. I don't have a secret formula, except the players know what's at stake. And so anytime we go into, so this weekend, we play some big teams. And we know, we know early that it is so important for, we start talking about seeding now. Who's talking about seeding right now? We want to be one of the top, top eight. We want to be one of the top four. So these games are important. Although they're happening in February, they're going to make a difference for us. So that's how my mm -hmm. scrambles. I don't know how others are scrambling in that way. But being in the Big 12, my mind has to scramble that way. Maybe in the SEC it won't. I don't know. But I don't know if I'm even answering your question, but. No, that was uh, very helpful. Thank you. 
No, it wasn't, but thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was. I promise. I, I Would I lie to you? Come on. Oh, you're just making me feel good before we leave. Hey, um, we're all in preseason form. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll go to Abby Bitterman. Hi, Patty. Yeah, at the beginning, you know, you mentioned just how at the beginning of the season, you're always nervous about, you know, are they ready? Um, are we prepared enough? And I was just wondering, um, you know, in especially in these early season games, uh, there's definitely a difference between the numbers on the scoreboard and the way that the team looked on the field and the way that you feel about it after the game. And so I was um, just wanting to ask what you're kind of hoping to see from this team um, on the field this, I guess, Thursday and then this weekend, and especially those newcomers and what you think you might or what you're hoping to maybe learn about them as a team in these first couple of games. I think for us, the first game, we want to come in and attack. That is that is the motto and the motion we're in is attack, set the tone, kind of like uh, being in a boxing ring, like throwing the first punch, but throwing more punches often and landing them. That is kind of the goal here. Um, Going into uh, this kind of just building off of that as we go through the weekend. And, um, you know, we've got prize fights in front of us this early. And I look back a year ago and I'm at this time of the season, I'm just trying to find someone to play because everything was canceling. And so it's just quite different. It's, it's really, um, it's really a challenge early in the season, which we didn't have last year. And that is something that I'm looking forward to. I don't know how much our newcomers will get a lot of play. I'm going to do my best. Um, I need them to just pay attention and learn the game more than anything. They'll get, they'll get pieces of it. They'll get bites. They'll get opportunities to get in. Um, the one player, again, that um, is going to get significant time on the mound is Jordy Ball. And um, everything about her at practice shows she is concentrated and ready. But when you put her on a different stage where it's real, uh, I'm anxious to see what that looks like for her and if anything changes. Um but we have really outstanding leadership. And I think our, like I had said earlier, our upperclassmen are talking the game. So when you're, when these freshmen are in the dugout, the game's going to be talked about and they need to listen. And that is keeping their attention and listening and learning and watching. So when it is your opportunity, you are very prepared. So That's kind of what our hope is, is that if you don't get a lot of playing time, at least you're really watching it in motion and and gathering the information. So um, I got a lot of good players, and that's a lot of players to play in a seven-inning game. And, you know, sometimes we're not going to play seven-inning games. So how do I squeeze everybody in a five-inning game? Um, those are always challenges and I admit they're good challenges, but it's still kind of hard because you want everybody to get some op- opportunity in at bats. Yeah. And then I also wanted to ask you just your thoughts on the significance of playing in um, this tournament with how important the bat busters um, have been as kind of like a pipeline to OU. This is really big for me. And I'm going to tell you why Mark Campbell is, He's kind of the assistant coach to the head coach in the way of the head coach gets all the glory and and so forth. But we really know that the grind comes from the assistants. The assistants make the head coaches look great. And that's what um, Mark Campbell did for the Bat Busters. He was the guy behind the scenes and he worked with uh, Sid Romero and Fale and Jossie and Tiare and Alyssa Brito and Uh, Nicole May and the list goes on and on and on but he worked he's been he was working over the last 25 years or more he worked with my daughter-in-law Andrea who's in her 30s Um, so he's been a presence that I am reaping the benefits of I am reaping the benefits of his work through TRA and all these players that I just mentioned So I really felt inclined to want to honor him and his passing was sudden and it was 
heart wrenching for a lot of players, parents, his his coaches as well. So I thought, what better way than to honor him with all of his players on the field where we're playing at uh, Bill Barber Park is where they played the majority of our, of their games. So everything about it just feels right. I'm really excited to be able to honor him in this way. Thank you, Patty. Yeah, I've heard a few more. We'll go to Joe Bentner. Hey, Patty. Um, just wanted to go back a second when you were talking about the book that you issued to your, your, to your team. Um, and you mentioned just like meeting your players halfway. When you started your coaching career, is that something you thought about just as far as trying to adapt with the players, trying to be not necessarily a player's coach, but like, you know, striking that balance between this is, you know, we, we got to take the serious here, but you also don't want to, you know, take away the fun from the game. How much, I guess, of a concerted effort did you have to make to get to a place as a coach where that was something you, you thought about on a regular basis? Yeah, it's an interesting question because when I got here, I wasn't um, a player's coach. I was a let. I was a push, push, push. Uh, I was a discipline coach. I um, didn't let players get away with a lot of things. I just ran a very tight ship. And it's funny because now those players are like, I can't even believe you let your team get away with this, get away with that. Um, I knew that there was a generation change happening and I knew that it, my style was not going to fit them. And that's when I knew I had to meet them about halfway. It was probably around the Kehlani Ricketts freshman year time. It was that group that was coming in that I felt different. I felt them different. Um, not that they didn't work as hard. They just needed to be treated a little bit differently, a little more gently, I guess. Um, I would hope, I, I think I am much more of a player's coach now than I was, uh, but I also made sure that they knew who I was, whether it's through my stories about my family or my family being around, um, certain things about me that they know whether it's music, whether it's whatever it is. I, I think that my important for me to create a relationship with them. And that is what was really different is that I spent time really talking to each one of them, whether it's over breakfast or in my office or what have you, I really created more of a relationship than I ever have. Thanks so much, Patty. Sure. I'll uh, we'll go Joey Helmer. Hi, Patty. How are you? Good. Um, yeah, you you lost G and Shannon from your pitching staff, for which for a lot of programs would be pretty crippling. But all you do, and you've talked about them some, but you bring Jordy in, you bring Hope in. Nicole's a year older and um, much more accomplished probably than your average sophomore. So how do you feel just about the depth of your pitching staff as a whole? Well, I, I like it. And I tell you, honestly, last year we had seven pitchers. Um, it sounds like a lot of depth, but it just wasn't good enough. So you ended up with two to three that you were using. And there were times when Giselle was not serviceable. So now we're down to two and bringing somebody in who maybe isn't quite ready for it. I feel a very solid three. And Macy McAdoo was making some waves here as well for a solid fourth if we need that. But she's getting better and she had injuries that kept her from really showing us what she's capable of. So uh, as barring any kind of injury, I feel very good about our depth. And um, it just the fitness level of, of our pitching staff um, is, is uh, commendable. I'm right. Uh, you'll you'll see it when you watch it you're gonna go geez wow uh specifically jordy ball she's just got a fitness level and a strength level i've never seen in a freshman so we've got to stay away from the injury bug and also what's kind of nice about jordy is she's gonna she's gonna hit for us as well so it's been a while since i've had a pitcher that has done both and um, we're looking forward to that Oh, last one to Jason. 
Hey coach, um, you know, you passed out the book, um, you know, early in the season and for a lot of players, it was a um, hard reset for them. Um, kind of walk me through what you've seen from Nicole May this off season and uh, her growth as a player. Um, I feel like, um, like I said, like it's, if there's anyone that really benefited from experience, it was Nicole May. And I'm going to tell you why. The experiences were not always easy. They were not always good for her. And Nicole May takes things very, very hard and she wears it for too long. And I think this book has taught her um, really to understand that through failure, you really learn how to grow, grow up, mature, how you handle it, kind of bleeds into other parts of your life. And uh, it's just really becomes a waste of time. And, and that's where this reset has come in, where uh, why waste time grumbling about it, get over it and get your mind set faster so we're not wasting time. And those are some of the things I think Nicole May has really felt through this experience. Was there any moments specifically last season that you can point to where you felt like she did that a lot? Early in the season, uh, she wasn't getting what she wanted. She wasn't happy with it. Um, but she'll tell you as well, Georgia, that trip to Georgia was a game changer for this entire program. Uh, but specifically for Nicole, she she didn't finish the game the way she wanted to. And that really bothered her and uh, it kind of, she hung on it, but eventually she turned it around. And if she didn't do that, then we probably wouldn't have finished as big 12 champions and so forth. She saved us in some big moments when we didn't have our upper classmen or those particular pitchers pitching at their best. Um, Nicole May became a, just a tough competitor and that experience led her right into postseason, and she carried us a lot through the postseason as well. So I think she learned a lot of lessons and that one Georgia game was the ultimate lesson learner for her. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a bunch coach. Thanks everybody. Thanks guys. See ya soon.